Hello everyone. Today we are talking about anthropology and history. Not only what the difference between them is, but also how to go about choosing which one you might want to major in in college. I myself am an anthropology major at UCLA, but a lot of people who watch my anthropology related videos are history majors or anthropology history double majors or high school students that don't know what they want to do in college. So I get a lot of questions about this connection in general and I just really wanted to dive into it today and answer all of your questions. So let's just get right into it. I don't need to push this intro to be any longer than it already is. So anthropology is the study of humans and history is the study of the past. And now obviously these things are inexplicably intertwined. People exist in the past. The past as we understand it is because of the humans who lived in this general past. But while these two things are extremely connected, history is definitely a wider approach. So you're looking at artifacts, events, things that lead up to these events. Whereas anthropology looks at individual people and cultures. Now based on that explanation, they're probably still sounding pretty similar, but the next two points I think will make it a little bit more clear. So history is broad and anthropology is less broad. This explanation kind of reminds me of the line that everyone's heard of in math class that a rectangle, no, a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle is not a square. Okay, hear me out. Anthropology is history, but history is not necessarily anthropology. History is this umbrella of time that I think often contains people and the things that humans did and the way that we study people which enter anthropology. I'm trying to think of a good example. Okay, okay, here we go. Let's talk about um, the birth control movement in America in the 1920s. and. This movement was caused by a series of factors. You look at the political climate, you look at the economic climate, you look at who was in charge at this time. And that approach is more of a historical approach. But if you were to look at the actual people involved, so Margaret Sanger, she is the founder of Planned Parenthood. She illegally sent a bunch of women birth control and she had her own practice that got shut down because it was illegal to do everything that she was doing. And if you look at her and everything in her life that led to her starting, in some senses, some would argue, this birth control, women's rights, sexual revolution, you're taking an anthropological approach. Her mom had so many kids and couldn't stop from getting pregnant. A lot of her siblings died. There's just a lot of things there that really lead you to understand her on this more personal level and a more like humanistic level. Um, and that example truly leads me into my next point, which is that anthropology is very person-centered, whereas history, I would argue, is very event-centered. I've alluded at this throughout literally the entire video, but I truly think that this is probably the most clear way to divide it. When you study history, you're going to be looking at a lot of different time periods and a lot of different things that are happening all at the same time. And when you study anthropology, you're taking a very different approach. You are looking at people or certain people who represent a particular community and their experiences. And I truly think that both offer such incredible perspectives and neither can be more important than the other because they work together. A good historical argument is going to have some anthropological facet embedded inside of it. And a good anthropological argument means nothing without historical context. So I, yes, I'm an anthropology major, but I am certainly a history nerd and I am absolutely partial to different time periods in history as everyone is. And even that statement, being partial to different time periods, I feel like within anthropology, you're more partial to like a culture which kind of exists through many periods of time. So I hope that that explanation was able to at least moderately explain these big differences between history and anthropology. I know they're really similar and a lot of these suggestions kind of bleed into one another, but just, you know, I'm trying my best, okay? And then the next thing is because I have so many student viewers, high school and college mostly, hello, um, I know that people are making big decisions about what to major in in college and what to, if they should switch their major in college, all these big things. And choosing between anthro and history can be really hard. So I wanna just give like a teeny little taste of what the actual course load is gonna look like that's different um, between these two programs. So like I mentioned a little bit before, the history major is looking at a lot of different time periods. So you're gonna take different prerequisites that look at Columbus, finding America, 
finding America, okay? And then you're gonna look at um, maybe World War II in another class, and you're gonna look at Egypt in another class, okay? There's all these different things that you could talk about. And then you'll dive into these deeper historical classes where maybe you're doing a lot of analyzing different things and why this particular war could have happened um, and maybe how history applies to the present, which personally I find super interesting because history always repeats itself. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> um, but in anthro, you tend to take different perspectives. First is breaking things up through time. You are breaking things up through perspective and lens. You're gonna look at things from a linguistic perspective in one class, and then you're gonna look at things from a cultural perspective. And then you're gonna look at things from a biological perspective and archeology span perspective, or archeological perspective. And then as you move into your upper divisions, you again, stay within these different groups but they take different uh, topics head on. And I personally really connect with looking at something from a bunch of different um, perspectives. And I'm sure history does this too, but it just seemed like the best path for me. But I know that's not true for everyone. And I have a lot of friends who, most of my friends actually who are history majors are double majors. So history is kind of like their extra major just because they love it. I find that people who love history just have this passion for it. And I just think, ah, I think that's so beautiful if that's you. Uh, same with anthro. So I don't know. I hope this was helpful in your understanding of the differences and maybe how you would choose to major in one of them. Um, because I know it's definitely something that I was thinking about a few years ago. Also, if you are new to this channel, hi. I don't know if I ever like officially introduced myself. I guess there's no harm in doing it at the end, right? My name is Olivia and I am at UCLA. I'm a third year studying anthropology. I'm minoring in evolutionary medicine. And spoiler, my entire channel is actually about anthro content and my experience with classes and everything. So if that's something that you think you could find interesting, feel free to check any of those other videos out. Last thing, I did want to say that Last, in my last video, I alluded to potentially doing a video on my minor, which is evolutionary medicine. And I had so many people say that they were interested in that, which it just makes my bio heart so happy. <laughs> so because of that, I am absolutely going to get that video out to everyone. So yeah, as always, leave any video recommendations or just questions in the comments for me and best of luck in choosing a major or completing whatever program it is you are already in. All right, I will see everyone next Sunday and yeah, okay, <laughs> bye.